Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. The Battle of the Mind. Here we are together again to continue our conversation in helping us to overcome the pesky sin issue that all of us wrestle with. Well, maybe I shouldn't say all because there are some people who have long since mastered the business of not falling into temptation. Good for them. Let me share a note of warning to them who have already won the war. Well, two texts. One, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves or you also may be tempted. Galatians 6 verse 1. Today you might be strong and victorious enough that you can help a brother or sister who is struggling with a sin issue. Offer your help with this piece of advice ringing in your ear. Be mindful of your own weakness and don't let it cause you to sin. The second text says, So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. The text speaks for itself. Now back to our friends who are here to learn how they can be victorious over the sin issue that they wrestle with from day to day. I want you to hear this from me today. It is not all gloom and doom, and you don't have to resign yourself to the idea, I can't help it, that's just who I am, utter lie. But it all comes down to the mind. I want, you to, I want to say to you, the first step towards victory over the repeated temptation that some of you listed comes with a new mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2 and verse 4. Now, with truth be told, that is not as easy as it sounds. You have to commit to experience a mind transplant, taking on the mind of Christ. Well, let us talk about it some more. Remember the list of uglies that many of us wrestle with, including the seemingly not so bad ones like gossip and envy and hate and jealousy? Let us hear what is keeping these things in our lives. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8 verses 5 to 8. The question therefore is this. Are you living according to the flesh or according to the Spirit? If you say that you're living by the flesh, which represents sins and sinfulness, then you are in trouble. You might not know it, but you are pushing God further and further away from you. After a while, it is clear to you and others around you that you are not pleasing God. But there's hope. Paul uncovers a secret. If you live according to the Holy Spirit, then you're on your way to being victorious. I'm serious. If anybody tells you that you cannot be victorious over sin, that guy is not telling you the truth. You can get to a place where the weight of this recurring sin is very heavy. Shed the weight. Shed the world tendencies. And do what? Take on the mind of Christ. Let me be more specific. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. That is your true and proper worship. Romans 12 and verse 1. This is what we hear. Our bodies are important. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Because your body is the place where most sin takes place. Paul is saying, be honest with yourself and acknowledge that most of the sins are done in the body. So Paul is saying to us in this 21st century, offer your bodies to Christ and let him give you the strength to win the battle. 
Now, this is where the mind comes into play. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Romans 12, verse 2. Let me say it another way. If you let your mind roam freely, you will soon find yourself doing the things of the world freely. So let us go to the mind and address it. If you don't arrest your mind, then your mind will arrest you and lead you into continuous sinfulness. Instead, embrace a process of transformation of the mind. If you are going to live a life of victory, then this is it. Bring your mind into God's program of transformation. He describes it as an ongoing process. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You sense the continuous nature of this advice, right? Ask anyone in this space, how do you win the battle over sin and repeated sin? You put yourself into a chamber God's hands that transforms your mind in preparation for a life of victory. So we make the effort to engage in the mind transformation process. Instead of feeding, feeding my mind with some of the junk in the world, I will feed my mind on things of God. I will spend time in prayer. I will certainly read my Bible far more frequently. So you're being called to victory, which means you have to be on the lookout. You cannot afford to let Satan tiptoe behind you and push you into saying yes to the temptation. My friend, be ready for those times. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. 1 Peter 5 verses 8 and 9. I have all confidence in you that if you follow this message, you will find yourself sinning less and less, and after a while you are able to walk in victory more and more victory over sin and sinfulness. Here's a prayer. Dear God, help me to be sober. Help me to be wise and for you to help me to think victory. Help me to take on the mind of Christ and let my mind not conform, but be transformed. In Jesus' name, amen. Thought. New mind, new attitude, new way to be a winner.